In today's video, I'm going to explain to you how to do swap and drop to write your ionic formulas. First thing that you're going to need is a periodic table. With your periodic table, you can predict several of the oxidation numbers using the group numbers on the table. So if you were in group number one, you have a plus one oxidation number. Group two is plus two. Group number 13 down here is plus three. Group number 14 is plus or minus 4. I'll explain which one is which in a second. Group number 15 is negative 3. Group 16 is negative 2. Group 17 is negative 1. And then your noble gases down here, they don't have oxidation numbers because they're not going to find, form ionic bonds. Now back to this plus or minus 4. For this one that's right here, if you are a non-metal, so all of your nonmetals are in this corner of the periodic table. Nonmetals all have negative charges. If you're a metal, which is all of these on this side of the periodic table, they're all going to have positive charges. So down here would be the positive 4. Up here would be negative 4. Now looking at your periodic table, there's a big group of your transition metals through here. With all of your transition metals through here, those charges are going to be different depending on how it's bonding. So with your charges, or your oxidation numbers, they're going to have to be given to you in Roman numerals like this. If something says that it's nickel 2, that means that you have nickel with a positive 2 charge. All cations are positive charges, so your metals are positive. Gold 1 means that you have Au with a plus one charge. And cobalt three is cobalt with a positive three. So your transition metals, and then we include tin and lead, those are going to be given to you with your Roman numerals. All of the other elements on the periodic table, they all have oxidation numbers that you can always find. So to swap and drop, what you're going to do is you're gonna have a pairing together. You're always going to have a positive charge and a negative charge, which are called cations and anions. If I have lithium and sulfur that I need to write a formula for, I'm first going to look at the periodic table, and I'm going to find their oxidation number. Lithium is Li. It's right here. Lithium has a plus one charge or oxidation number. Sulfur is down here. Sulfur lives in group number 16. Its oxidation number is negative 2. Now to swap and drop, what you're going to do is you're going to get rid of the charges because those are going to end up canceling out anyways. So the positive and the negative are going to go away. And then to swap and drop, what you do is you take the numbers that are left here and they swap over to the other element and they fall into the basement. So this right here, the only thing that's left is a number 1. It's a little ghost. You can't see it. That one would come over here to your sulfur, but we don't have to write the number 1. So when I swap and drop with your lithium and sulfur, you make Li2S, because that 2 fell over here. So your formula, Li2S, is from lithium and sulfur. Now to do another example, I have calcium and I have phosphate pairing together. Calcium lives in group 2. Its oxidation number is positive 2. So I have Ca plus 2. And then phosphate is a polyatomic ion. I know that because it ends at A-T-E. For phosphate, we know that it's PO4 negative 3. Now I'm going to put this in parentheses to lock in the PO4 that cannot change. What I'm going to swap and drop is with this negative 3 and the positive 2. So my negative and my positive are going to cancel out, so those are going to disappear. This 2 is going to come over here to my phosphate. This 3 is going to come over here to my calcium. So when I write this formula, it's Ca3, I'm going to open parentheses, PO4, close my parentheses, 2. Now what both of these are actually doing is you are canceling out your charges. So with this one, it took two lithiums to cancel out my one sulfur charge. That's because each lithium has a positive one charge to give me a total 
of positive 2. My sulfur has a negative 2 charge, so my positive 2 and my negative 2 cancel one another out. The same thing happens with my calcium and my phosphate. I ended up with three calciums. My three calciums each have a positive 2 charge. Phosphate is PO4, negative 3, and I had two of them. So on my positive charge, I have plus 6. On my negative charge, I have negative 6. So those two cancel one another out. Now to do another example, I have barium sulfate. Barium symbol on the periodic table is BA. Barium is right here on the periodic table. It has a plus 2 charge. Sulfate is another polyatomic ion. It is SO4, negative 2. So when I swap and drop here, I'm going to lock this in in parentheses. Plus and my minus disappear. This 2 comes over here. This 2 comes over here to make it BA2, SO4, 2. Now with this one, I have a 2 and a 2. If both of those numbers are the same, they're going to need to be reduced down. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So my final formula is BaSO4. I don't have to put sulfate in parentheses here because there's only one of them. If you want to, that's okay. Now if you end up with a compound, let's say it's just element X, 2, and then Y, 4. If you end up with a 2 and a 4, you still have to reduce that down because both of those numbers are divisible by 2. So 2 divided by 2 leaves you with 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so you would have x, y, 2. So you always have to reduce these. Now, for my final example, I have something that is a word problem. And it's asking me to write all of the correct formulas between these different ions. So some of them are cations and some of them are anions. This one is sulfur. Sulfur on the periodic table is right here. It has a negative 2 charge. So I'm going to make a list. Here's my anions. I have S, negative 2. Sodium on the periodic table is right here. It has a positive 1 charge. So I'm going to make another column. I call that cations. And that is Na plus 1. I have sulfur and I have sodium. Chlorate is a polyatomic ion. My polyatomic ion here is ClO3, negative 1. So I'm going to put that in my anion column. Iron 2, iron is Fe. This 2 tells me that I have a plus 2 charge because all metals are all positive. So I'm going to put that in my cation formula, Fe plus 2. And then last but not least, I have nitrogen. Nitrogen on the periodic table is right here. It has a negative 3 charge, so I'm going to put that in my anion. Now the problem is telling me to tell all of the correct formulas between all of these different cations and anions. So I'm going to make all the correct pairings. I know that I have to have a cation and an anion for all ionic formulas. I always have to put the positive charge first and then the negative charge. So when I go through and do this problem, I'm going to take sodium and I'm going to pair it up with all three of these anions. I'm going to take sodium and I'm going to pair it up with sulfur. When I swap and drop there, it's Na2S. I'm going to take sodium and pair it up with chlorate. When I swap and drop there, we just end up oops, with NaClO3. Swap and drop, it's just one and one. I'm also going to take sodium, and I'm going to pair it up with nitrogen. Now when I pair up these two together, my three travels over here to my sodium, so that's going to make it Na3N. So I paired up sodium with all three of my anions. I'm going to do the same thing with iron. I'm going to take iron and pair it up with sulfur, chlorate, and nitrogen. So Fe plus 2, and I'm going to pair that up with sulfur, S negative 2. I have a plus 2 and a minus 2 charge. Those are going to end up canceling one another out right away. So whenever you swap and drop, it just makes Fe S because there's a 2 and a 2 and it reduces. 
Then I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to pair it up with chlorate. So my 2 comes over here to my chlorate. So that makes FeClO3, 2, outside of parentheses. And the last pairing that I have, I have iron plus 2. And I'm going to pair that up with nitrogen, N minus 3. So when I swap and drop here, the 2 comes over here to my nitrogen, 3 comes over here to my iron, Fe3, N2. So those are all the possibilities that I can make with the anions listed in my problem because I have to have a positive charge and a negative charge. So there's only six possibilities because I only have two cations with my three anions.